this sub $50 camera is insane. Okay, eight reasons I'm switching to Canon on occasion. As a Sony shooter mostly, I'm going to give you eight reasons and one bonus dagger in the heart reason as to why I may switch to Canon on occasion. So which Canon is it? This, this may surprise you. So the first reason is its price per usability slash versatility, which I know is a mouthful, but so is the name of this guy. This is the Canon PowerShot SX30IS. It is a sub $50, 12-year-old, 14.1 megapixel bridge camera that has 35 times, yes, 35 times optical zoom, equivalent to a 24 millimeter to an 840 millimeter with optical image stabilization and a variable aperture of f2.7 to 5.8. It shoots an HD video with stereo sound and HDMI output with a zoom framing assist function, great general autofocus, advanced smart auto mode, a fully mother flipping flip out screen, and those amazing Canon colors, which has made me generally just keep this camera in auto for extreme ease of use, along with its massive versatility, which really brings me to the main reason I pick up this camera over all my others. It's number two, the zoom range. Again, a range of 24 millimeter to 840 millimeter. But after the 35 times optical zoom, you actually get another, get this, 95 times digital zoom on top of that for a total of a whopping 140 times zoom. So you're getting a 24 millimeter to a 3,360 millimeter zoom range within the zoom rocker at the front. Even though you're just digitally cropping, which anybody can do in post, and normally you don't wanna do it unless you're a 42 megapixel camera or up, but again, this is within the zoom rocker. And even though the image is absolutely garbage at times, it still could work in some instances. And since you are not using this camera in any like professional capacity, it is strictly for fun. Or if you're a content creator, hobbyist, or just camera addict, unless you're shooting, I don't know, maybe like a found footage horror or something. <laughs> Granted, the zoom is shaky if it's not on a tripod, but this is still why I'd consider taking this camera on a hike or a family vacation over my Sony ZV-1 or any other point and shoot. And it makes me consider buying the newest iteration, the Canon SX70HS, another power zoom bridge camera that actually shoots in 4K and has a 65 times optical zoom. And because I'm vain, also has a flip screen. Perfect for vlogging, which is pretty standard for almost all modern cameras. But this brings me to point number three. This 12 year old camera has a flip out screen. And to be honest, I think for me, a camera without a fully articulating flip out screen is a deal breaker, as I do mostly video and vlogging. Now, I didn't actually pay for this camera. I was visiting my parents, rummaging through some old drawers at their house, and I found this gem just sitting collecting dust, as it used to be my mom's uh, real estate camera some 10 years ago. But I, I was sure it was going to be literal trash but I turned it on and it immediately fired up. And I saw the flip out screen and noticed the autofocus was on point. And this was even before I appreciated the zoom range. And I thought, well, if I could vlog on this, I, I may just take her home with me to play with. But then since I noticed there wasn't a hot or cold shoe to attach a little boom mic to, I just, I just thought there was no way there'd be usable audio, which brings me to point number four. This in-body mic has great audio for vlogging. Okay, but here is going to be some stupidly unfair vlogging test between three very different cameras. So let me know what you think. Okay, this is sort of a vlog test on my Canon SX30IS. Just to show you, this is auto mode. I'm gonna do auto exposure. So I'm gonna go from inside to outside and you'll see it's a bit grainy here. We're at full HD, 720p. Uh, so it's gonna get blown out for a second. But in full light, again, there's no audio attachment. Um, so this is just straight out of the camera. You can see how the audio adjustment is gonna work. Obviously blown out, but not bad. Gonna go in shade for a minute. Just wanna see if you can hear me um, with the ambiance. There isn't really a way to attach a small little mic to this. Um, you can uh, plug in a mic, but you can't really attach it. So maybe I could hand hold a mic, um, but I think pretty much the audio is fairly usable, um, we'll see. But the image is pretty good, especially if you're in daylight. Um, at night, it is garbage. There's nothing to be seen. It's just full blankets of grain. Um, but the auto exposure works really well. I think it exposes to the sky pretty nicely. I mean, that's something most cameras can't do even today.
Okay, so I went from using my cheapest camera to my most expensive. I, I'm using the FX3 here, auto exposure as well. And I've got the XLR uh, handle on with a mic. And so we're gonna see the difference in quality. Again, going from inside to outside. 720p, uh, so it's gonna get blown out for a second. But in full light, again, there's no audio attachment. Um, so this is just straight out of the camera. You can see how the audio adjustment is gonna work. Obviously blown out, but not bad. Gonna go in shade for a minute. And I think the quality might be better, but I just wanna sort of do a comparison. Um, let's see, exposing for the sky. Super bright, super blown out. I'm gonna go into the shadow. Patch it, so maybe I could hand hold the mic. Um, but I think pretty much the audio is fairly usable. Um, we'll see, but. I've got a 20 on, so it's a 1.8 compared to the 24 2.7. Uh, so it's gonna look a bit wider and should look a bit blurrier, blurrier. The depth of field is different, obviously, and the image quality as this is in 4K. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to show the difference between my high end and my lowest end. Woo. Okay, so this is my last test. This is on my Sony point and shoot. ZV-1, so auto exposure again. I have, um, the shutter is also auto, so we're just an aperture priority. Um, there's no mic as well, this is the built-in mic. And uh, yeah, so inside the outside. Let's see how it looks. Um, I do have my ND filter on auto, but remember it's only two stops of ND. Obviously blown out, but not bad. Gonna go in shade for a minute. Just want to see if you can hear me um, with the ambiance. There isn't really a way to attach a small little mic to this quality. I've always found the audio quality to be pretty good with this in general. There is no um, attached uh, mic. Um, so again, your, the FX3 is going to sound the best. The image is pretty good, especially if you're in daylight. Um, at night, it is garbage. There's nothing to be seen. It's just full blankets of grain sort of do it all small um, camera, but obviously the zoom range is pretty limited. In general, this is 4K quality as well, so that's really great. It can match up with my other Sony a7C um, and even my FX3 if I do it correctly. Uh, but yeah, just want to show you this example. Okay, that is probably a ridiculous test. The FX3 with an XLR boom mic is pretty difficult to compare to, but the audio for the SX30 was almost better than the ZV-1. Now, the ZV-1 clearly has a better image strictly for vlogging, yet it is both not very versatile with a zoom range of 24 to 70. Again, compared to the 24 to 840, just, just bears repeating. And the ZV-1 is $700 more expensive. So it all depends what you're using your camera for. If it's just for vlogging or taking on a road trip or you need versatility, and the story is more important than the image quality, then I don't know, maybe I'm gonna bring this guy because reason number five, the size and weight with a surprisingly decent battery life too, makes this great for traveling. It's so lightweight around my neck. I could see going on a hike with it where you could get great zooming views atop a mountain and then a solid vlog on the way down. I feel like I could literally toss it from across the room into a bag, sprint up a hill with it without feeling precious about it. Whereas sometimes I don't bring my Sony a7C or my FX3 on a hike because I'd hate if anything happened to them. And then my ZV-1 feels a little pointless sometimes because it's small zoom range. So I think I will be picking this up more as I already am to take it places. And you know what, 720 be damned, okay? Okay, the next two are quick points, but it's worth noting. So reason number six, this is an old camera. So you'd imagine the autofocus would be terrible, but this is a 12 year old Canon, not a two year old Panasonic. Well, kidding, sort of, but it's remarkable how reliable it is in video and photo and all zoom ranges depending on minimum focusing distance. And then, well, point six and a half is the SX30 IS has IS, the image stabilization, which is helpful for such a zoom range, but it definitely shows its age a bit. And to get some revenge here, a 2007 Panasonic camcorder is probably still better, but it is still a, a super useful and versatile feature. Now, point seven, which is a relic from the past as well, of simpler times when your camera had a built-in flash, which you can flip up and down manually 
if you want to use it. Okay, so this is the video quality and it is getting dusk out and you can see it's a bit grainy. So now we're gonna take pictures so you can see with the flash up what it looks like. Yeah? Okay, can you do the flash? Okay, let's do the flash. The camera will also detect when you should use it, which is usually the case when you're not in direct sun. And I know I'm only touching on it here briefly, but the, the photo quality is actually completely usable, especially with the flash up. But it's sort of a feature I wish they'd bring back to more point shoots like the Sony ZV-1. So speaking of our recent past, this brings me to the eighth and final reason I'd pick this up. And, and I'll give you some reasons why you definitely shouldn't and a bonus after. The point eight is the retro vibe. Okay, this may be a downfall for some of you as the video is only 720p, which in nowadays you can get an Ursa 12K and the standard is at minimum 4K. But there was something I noticed when I first played back some video that there is this like Blair Witchian vibe. Like again, some found footage horror film or just like old family home videos from the early aughts, the 2000s. In many ways, we all scoff at old tech until it becomes hip. From vinyl and now cassettes being cool to old film cameras and vintage lenses, there's always a trend of the recent past being cool again after a period of being terribly uncool. There's a trend of what I might call this like VHS wave, where digital chromatic aberrations and pixelated power zooms bridge the old retro of analog to the new retro of digital. As beauty is in the eye of the beholder, this camera connects not, not just to those generational divides, but also to camera desires. So to bring it back down to earth, why did they ever produce this tiny power zoom? Well, if you don't know, it is what is called a bridge camera. Every camera maker has their own from the Nikon P1000, the Sony RX10 Mark IV, the Lumix FX1000, to even Canon's newest, again, the PowerShot SX70HS. Now, maybe what I'm actually saying is not that you need this Canon SX30 specifically, but maybe why you may wanna look into bridge cameras, and obviously, maybe a more modern one, which will also be considerably more expensive. Like the Nikon P1000 looks amazing, but it's roughly $1,400, so, but, but what is a bridge camera? Most of you may know this already, but a bridge camera bridges the divide between a point and shoot like my Sony ZV-1 and an interchangeable lens camera like my Sony a7C and my FX3. Because you get the ease of use of a point and shoot and the versatility of an interchangeable lenses. Which, when I say it like that, sounds like a no-brainer. Since it's still cheaper than my full-frame cameras and more versatile. However, what you gain in versatility, you usually lose in quality. Typically the sensor size from sub one inch to one inch sensors to APS-C size sensors is still probably more than good enough for most, but you may lose some dynamic range and low light capabilities. But again, it's, it's probably not a fair comparison with the FX3 for example, and you'll not be able to shoot super wide as usually 24 millimeters is as wide as it goes. But I just, I happen to love 24 anyways. Also, I think a bridge camera is like the, the soccer dad mustache of cameras, which, which I can sort of dig, even if it's not quite cool yet. So even on this Canon SX30, the low light capabilities are horrendous. The flaring is comical and the fact it's only 720p is, is beyond antiquated. And yeah, I can still recommend this camera if, if you can find it on eBay for 20 to $50. And now I may consider the Sony RX4 or now the newest Canon bridge, the SX70. And in general, there is one reason I'd easily switch to Canon because, and this is the bonus reason, I'm only investing in the camera, not the whole ecosystem of lenses. So I can keep all my Sony lenses and I don't have to start a whole new collection of primes and zooms or get adapters. The bridge camera has it all, sort of. So what do you guys think? Do you have a bridge camera? Would you guys ever shoot in 720p? What do you think of the image? And would you ever pick up this dad's mustache of a camera, you know, to get ahead of the retro nostalgia trends? Or am I just stupid because, you know, I found a new free toy in a drawer? Well, don't answer the stupid part of that as I already know the answer, but color me dumb for switching to this Canon on occasion. So thank you for your time and attention. Consider liking and subscribing. It's, it's a little random act of kindness that helps me out more than you'll know. So thanks again until the next video. Okay, love you all, bye.